Everything that you need to make this daisy flower bunting is going to be listed in the description box below. I'm starting with the magic ring. I do have a video on how to do the magic ring if you're not familiar with it and I will place that right here. And if you prefer not to do the magic ring then you can also just do a chain four and connect. So I take my magic ring and I want to put 12 half double crochet stitches into my magic ring. So how you do your half double crochet quickly is yarn over, go into your loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all three. Now I've got one. If you have a hard time knowing where your first stitch is, you always just take your first stitch and you mark it with a stitch marker. That way you'll know where your first stitch was. So I'm going to go ahead and put 11 more half double crochet into my magic ring. So I have 12 total. I have 12 half double crochet, so I'm going to go ahead and close my ring up. And you want to slip stitch into your first stitch that you made. So take out your stitch marker and you need to put your hook through. However, go ahead and drop your yellow and we're going to start working our petals with the white yarn. So take your white, lay it over your hook, grab a hold of it, and you want to pull through the white to close. Then just take your working end of your white yarn I want you to chain up five. So one, two, three, four, five. So you've chained five, and now what we're going to do is we're going to work our way back down. So this is your first stitch here. You always skip the first one, and then you go into the next one with a single crochet, and then one single crochet in the next three going down. Two. And that last one, don't skip it, you need four single crochets going down each petal. So you chain up five, that gives you four single crochets coming down. And what we're going to do is this is where we connected. We're just going to go into the next stitch and slip stitch it right on there. Alright, so we've got our first petal. So we slip stitched and now we're just going to chain up five again. And we're going to do four single crochets back down the petal or find your next stitch and go ahead and slip stitch your petal in place. So you're going to do that all the way around and you should end up with 12 petals. So chain up five, skip your first, that last turning chain you always skip so that leaves you with four on the way back. Find your next stitch, slip stitch it there. So go ahead and continue doing that all the way around until you have 12 petals all the way around. I apologize again if there's been some drastic lighting changes. There's clouds coming back and forth today and it's messing with my natural lighting, which is the only lighting I use anyway. Uh, but I have my 11 petals and now I just I have my last one. So I'm going to chain up five, work my four singles down 
and right here is where my 12th petal will be slip stitched. Now you can chain one and you can cut your yarn because you're done with the yellow and you're done with the white. I've got my flower with my 12 petals and I haven't sewn in my ends or anything. I'll do that after I'm done. And just make sure that all of your strings on the back are pulled nice and tightly so everything falls into place properly. And take your petal and what we're going to do is kind of move it apart a little. So you know how when you're crocheting all of your your V's form on one side and then you also have these back loops too. What we're going to do is if you spread the petal apart a little you'll see here's your front your first stitch and then there's also one on the back side we're going to go ahead and I've got a slit knot on my hook put your hook into the back side we're going to start our single crochets right there. So we've got one single crochet here and then your first stitch from when you went down your petal that will be your second. So you want two single crochets in the tip of each petal and we're going to chain three in between each petal. All right, so we move on to the next one. Kind of spread it and move it apart. And you can see right there in the back side, single crochet. Then look for the first stitch on the front side. And you can count from the bottom, one, two, three, four. Single crochet there. And then chain three. One more I'll show you. Spread your petal apart a bit. Find the back and single crochet into that one. And then single crochet into your first stitch from the other side. And chain three. Now continue this all the way around and I'll meet you when I get to my last petal. I'm on my final petal and I'm going to do my last two single crochets into my 12th petal. Chain three and then just find your first stitch from your first petal and slip stitch right into there. Now we're going to chain up one and we're going to put one single crochet into the same stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch, and then where the three come in, you want to do three single crochets around that chain of three. So there's one, two, three. Now just repeat. You want to put, and it might be hard for people to tell where the first and st second stitch are supposed to be. First stitch is actually here, not here. And that's gonna, that might be kind of a challenge for some people. It looks like it's not really gonna be able to get your hook in there, but this is the next stitch right here. And it's kind of on the corner. So there's one and your second one is the easily accessible one two and then three around your three chains you know it's kind of a dark color I'm using so 
So the first one, just look for your, your V's or look for your stitches. Here's that first one and it's kind of off to the side. So go ahead and put your hook in there. Single crochet. Single crochet. And then three around the chain three. Continue that all the way around and I'll meet you at the other side. I'm at my last section before I connect and like I always say if you need to stitch mark your first stitch of a row around to know where that you where you need to stop or where you need to connect always do so I didn't do it with this round because I forgot uh, but I know how to get there it's based it's mainly for people watching that don't know how uh, so I have my last two single crochets in the top of the petal Whoop. and my last three around the chain three and then my first stitch is right here this is the chain one, this is the stitch, and I'm going to slip stitch right into that spot. Alright, now this is where we form the triangle. So you want to chain up two. The chain two is not going to count in this pattern. So you chain up two, then you want to double crochet into the spot the same stitch as the chain two so you pull through two pull through two your first double crochet and since this chain three does not count to make it a little easier for you to know where to stop the top stitch that you just did is from your double crochet go ahead and mark it so you know where to connect your round so we're going to do five double crochet this chain two doesn't count. This first double crochet is number one. Now you want to do four more. Now you want one half double crochet in the next stitch. Now you want eight single crochet. So single crochet and then one single crochet in the next eight. So one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now you want one half double crochet in the next stitch. Then you want five double crochet. So that's one side of our triangle. Now we're going to chain three and we're going to start that pattern over again. So in the next stitch, one oops, double crochet, but you want to do five all together down the row. So one two, three, 
four, five, five. So every time you have a chain three, it's one of the corners. So we have one, two, three, four, five double crochet. In the next stitch, we want one half double crochet. Then we want eight single crochet. Then we're going to go back up to the peak. So one half double crochet followed by five double crochet. chain three and our last side is going to be starting the next stitch one five double crochet one half double crochet, eight single crochet, one half double crochet, five double crochet, and the last five stitches. Chain three. And where you're marked, that's the stitch that you want to connect to. Alright, so you formed the three corners. And our next row will be our final row and it makes it look much more like a triangle. So now we're on our last row, our last round, I should say. So what we're gonna do is chain up two. This chain does not count. And you wanna put one double crochet into the same stitch again mark that top stitch so you know where you need to connect and now we want to put double crochets in the next two stitches as well so we have a total of three double crochets one half double crochet in the next one single crochet in the next 12. So you're going to do 12 single crochets. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. 
one half double crochet in the next stitch and three double crochet into the last three stitches on this side. And now we've reached our corner. So we're going to put three double crochet into that corner. Chain three and put three more double crochet into the same corner. Then you want to start that same pattern all over again. And the thing that you need to keep in mind is with this corner, a lot of people end up skipping the first one. Uh, sometimes it can't be seen because it's covered. Like if it's covered by these, people automatically migrate to this one because it's the first one they see. But really, you pull these back, this is the first one you, you need to go into. So we're going to start our double crochets there with three double crochets. So one in the next three. One. Two. Three. One half double crochet. Twelve single crochet. one half double crochet and three double crochet now we've reached another corner so we're gonna do three double crochet chain three and then three more double crochet now we're on our last side of the triangle so remember not to skip that first stitch right there and we're gonna do three double crochet, one half double crochet, twelve single crochet, one half double crochet, and lastly three double crochet. In the corner, our last corner, three double crochet, chain three and and three more double crochet and this is where we connected you just slip stitch right to there chain one, pull it through, cut your yarn, pull it through, and you should probably stretch out your corners just a little. And there we have our, tri our first triangle for our bunting. And I've seen people hang their triangles upside down. I've seen them with, you know, pointed downwards. It's however you want to do it. Now I'll show you how I connected mine. You can pretty much connect your bunting however you want to. If you want to do them flush up against each other or, you know, a few inches apart, that's fine. So with a slip knot on your hook, one option you have is to 
we can make a chain of five. Connect to the first chain you made and slip stitch it. That way you have a loop. If you're going to hang your bunting, you have a loop that you can hang it from. And then go ahead and chain as many as you want for the end. I'll just chain one, two, three, four, five. I'll chain six. So you've got your loop to hang it. You've got your chain of six. And go ahead and take your triangle. Go into the corner and make that your first single crochet. And then put one single crochet in each stitch along the top. Then when you finish along the top, place one single crochet into the corner. Chain as many as you want. Depends on how far apart you want them. I just chained three. And I have another that I worked on yesterday. And all you gotta do is start with your next one. Start in the corner, put your hook in, turn that into the first double, or sorry, the first single crochet. And then just put one in each along the top until you have all of your triangles on. Then lastly, put one in the corner. And for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to say that this is the end. Like I'm going to put these two together. This is the end of what I've got. Since I started with a chain five connect and then chain of six I'll do that but in the opposite direction so chain of six one two three four five six then I'm gonna do now if you need to at this point mark where your sixth stitch was mark it and then I'm gonna chain up five more for the loop one two three four five and then you just want to slip stitch into where you connected. And that gives you your other loop. So, cut your yarn, pull that on through, and you can sew this in so it'll, you know, look better and you'll have a loop on either side to hang them from. Me, I just hung mine from the corner and I'll show you what uh, my finished one that's hanging above my shelves looks like. So this is my finished bunting. I picked, you know, some brighter colors for spring. I've been feeling very springy and I'm ready. I painted my shelves yellow and I hung this above it and I absolutely love how they came out and I know I wanted to incorporate a daisy into the middle or some kind of flower the daisy just seemed to be what stood out to me the most I'm usually not really big on decorating but you know I've gotten into the mood with it uh, lately and ignore that that will be covered with something creative soon <laughs> Uh, but thank you for following the tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.